بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الحبة في الله continue on our study in قواعد الأربعة قال الشيخ الإمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى talking about the مشركين and this is the second قاعدة القاعدة الثانية أنهم يقولون ما دعوناهم وتوجهنا وتوجهنا إليهم إلا لطلب القربة والشفاعة فدليل القربة قوله تعالى والذين تخذوا من دونه أولياء ما نعبدهم إلا ليقربونا إلى الله زلفا إن الله يحكم بينهم فيما هم فيه يختلفون إن الله لا يهدي من هو كاذب كفار ودليل الشفاعة قوله تعالى ويعبدون من دون الله ما لا يضرهم ولا ينفعهم ويقولون هؤلاء شفعاؤنا عند الله وشفاعة شفاعتان شفاعة منفية وشفاعة مثبتة فشفاعة منفية ما كانت تطلب من غير الله فيما لا يقدر الحمد لله عليه إلا الله ودليل قوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون وشفاعة مثبتة هي التي تطلب من الله والشافع مكرم بشفاعة والمشفوع له من رضي الله قوله وعمله بعد الإذن كما قال تعالى من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذني نصدق قاعدة عبدت في الله is that the pagans this is their argument and this is the imam clarifying their argument and refuting it the pagans say and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, we do not supplicate and turn towards them except to come closer to Allah for intercession. The evidence that they sought to come closer to Allah, Alhamdulillah, is the statement of the Almighty and those who take beside him supporters say, we worship them only that they may bring us nearer to Allah. Verily, Allah will judge between them where they differ. Verily, Allah does not judge or does not guide a lying disbeliever. The evidence that they sought intercession from other than Allah is the Most High saying they worship others besides Allah who cannot benefit them nor harm them and say they are intercessors with Allah. Intercession, Ahabitifillah, is of two types, as the Imam said. The prohibited intercession and the affirmed intercession. The prohibited intercession is that which is sought from other than Allah for that which only Allah is able to fulfill. And the proof is Allah the Most High Statement. O you who believe, spend of that which we have provided for you before a day comes when there will be no bargaining, no friendship, uh, nor friendship, nor intercession. And the disbelievers, they are wicked sinners. The affirmed intercession it is that which is sought from Allah and the intercessor is honored with intercession. And the one who is interceded for is someone whose statements and actions Allah is pleased with after his permission. Like the Most High said, who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? An integral part of understanding this principle is that those who worship other deities besides Allah did not worship them because they believed they created this existence or provided sustenance, or that they gave life or death or brought forth the rain from the sky or caused plant life to grow, 
all of those things they did not believe they had control over. However, their argument and evidence was that they, meaning their deities and idols, would intercede on their behalf with Allah. According to the statement of Allah, they said, we worship them only that they may bring us nearer to Allah. And this is exactly what you find uh, a lot of the extreme Sufis and groups like the Rafa'i and other Turuk or Tariq, tariq Turuk, uh, that they make these statements. They say, we're not worship, we don't worship anyone except Allah. They, they deny that shirk is a part of the religion. And they they believe they claim to believe Tawheed. And again, the reality of something is in its substance, not in what it's called, not in their denial of of that they that they uh, commit shirk, nor in their denial or their affirmation of Tawheed. They affirm Tawheed on their tongues. But what they practice by sacrificing to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and going to the graves, making tawaf around the graves, having graves in their masajid, and with their, their seeking intercession from their saints, all of this bears witness to shirk. And it's shirk, shirk al-akbar, which takes a person out of the fold of Islam. In considering the pagan Arabs' uh, argument for committing shirk with Allah, we can draw a parallel with what the people uh, used to say during the time of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. And this is one reason why he wrote books like Kitab al-Tawheed, Keshav al-Shubahat, and the Quiet al-Arba and the Sul al in order to clarify Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, to especially emphasize Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, because in these times, especially in his time, that these are where the aspects of controversy within the Muslim community, within the Ummah, from people who said La ilaha illallah, but they worshiped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They supplicated to other than Allah. They uh, sacrificed to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they sought barakah and blessings from trees and uh, other things and rocks and so forth and idols. So, during the earlier times, you'll find that the Salaf, during the times of the Salaf, that even Ahl Bid'ah, they didn't really have this shubahat, this doubtfulness of Tawheed al uluhiyah that even groups like the Mu'tazila, the Jahabiyya even, and uh, of course the Asha'ira later and others, they, they didn't aslan make their bid'ah with regards to uluhiyah. They accepted the rububiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the uluhiyah of Allah, that worship belonged to Allah. But where they deviated, most of those groups deviated with regards to al-asma'i wa sifat. But it was later when the ummah really began to weaken and many foreign ideologies and other people began to embrace Islam with other ideas and foreign nations and and just general weakness of the Muslims in their creed and deen is where this this other these new de this new deviations with regards to the concept of Tawheed al uluhiyya meaning in Tawheed al ibadah or the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa taala. This is when people begin to uh, deviate in these in these uh, issues. So uh, the people. In his time, they uttered the testimony of faith that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. However, they felt the need to seek intercession between themselves and Allah. Although the people claimed Islam as their religion, many of them would supplicate to inhabitants of the graves to seek intercession or perform pilgrimage or seek blessings from trees and rocks. And this was similar to the practices of the pre-Islamic times. Even today, for example, in places like Ethiopia, people travel to uh, King uh, Naja uh, to King Najashi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who was a tabi'i, 
they travel to his grave and they supplicate to him and seek his intercession. Some Muslims mistakenly seek intercession from the Prophet ﷺ in this life by supplicating to him ﷺ. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala he asked, uh, asked the Prophet ﷺ, who are the most deserving people of your intercession on the day of judgment? He ﷺ, said, whoever says there is no God worthy of worship except the law, sincerely from his heart. Intercession will take place in the hereafter, not in this life. So we do not supplicate or pray to the Prophet ﷺ, angels, saints, or anyone or anything besides Allah. Sheikh Ahmed Ghuliman states, the intercession is for those who are sincere and specifically for those who fulfill Tawheed after the permission of Allah and not those who commit shirk with Allah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Everyone who has complete sincerity in actualizing uh, through knowledge, belief, and deeds, loving, hating, and having enmity based upon there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, is the most deserving of mercy. Is the most deserving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Meaning that their ibadah is strictly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intercession, which does not involve shirk or sin, is asking someone to negotiate a judgment and to pardon one's crimes or lessening a person's punishment and increasing the reward for the one that deserves it. Intercession is of two types, as we mentioned. There's the general intercession, for prophets, angels, and the believers, and the specific intercession for the Prophet ﷺ. The specific, which is for the Prophet ﷺ, is uh, to intercede for the Muslim community on the Day of Judgment, when the sun will be near and people will be immersed in their own sweat according to the level of their sins. The second, uh, specific intercession, and the Prophet will also intercede for the people of paradise to enter it. Thirdly, he وسلم, will intercede for his uncle Abu Talib to have a reduced punishment in the fire, although he'll be in the hellfire forever, and he died a disbeliever. He died disbelieving in Allah, but this is specifically for him, so we don't pray even for our disbelieving relatives if they die upon shirk and kufr, we can't seek the mercy of Allah for them because their case is no longer, uh, you know, it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have died of disbelief. Wallahu musta'an. So, the, going to the second category, which is the general intercession. And this encompasses all the prophets, the angels, and righteous believers, which includes interceding on behalf of those deserving to enter the hellfire to be excused from it. Secondly, they will be allowed intercession for those believers who are punished in hell to be taken out of hell. Thirdly, they will be allowed intercession for the people of uh, Al-Araf, whose evil and good deeds are equivalent, so they will be halted between paradise and hell until they are interceded for. And then fourthly, they will intercede for those uh, in paradise to be raised to another level in paradise. So this is the general intercession that the, the prophets will have and also the, uh, you know, the, the Salihid and the Mujahideen and, you know, the righteous believers, the Malai and the Malaika. Seeking intercession should only be sought from Allah and He can only fulfill our request in this life. The pagan Arabs used to worship idols that needed to be uh, transported, that required cleaning, that could not provide any benefit or harm, nor could they speak, and this is similar to all the various things and objects and beings that are worshipped besides Allah and that are used uh, for intercession. So to find people who utter the testimony of faith seeking intercession from the deceased is appalling for many reasons. And even by mere logic, we have to ask, how does one seek permission from someone or something who cannot help themselves or prevent their own death or come back to life? This is the state that some communities that attest to the testimony of faith are in. They are practicing shirk, just like the pagan Arabs 
with beings and created things which cannot intercede for even themselves by raising their hands to supplicate to them, crying, showing extreme humility, and uh, hoping for their mercy and their intercession. Sheikh Muhammad Ahmed al Jami, rahimullah ta'ala, stated regarding this principle and making a, a summary. He said, the pagans' worship of their gods was from the perspective uh, the perspective intercession and seeking inter uh, intermediaries. No, uh, not from their believing they could create or provide or harm or benefit. So meaning that the pagans, their worship of their gods was in the way through intercession, not by uh, directly thinking those gods could necessarily harm them or benefit them. But they just felt that they needed those intercessions. They needed those uh, those idols, those statues, those various objects that they worship. They felt that those things could bring them closer to Allah. But what you'll find now from some of the extreme Sufi sects and others is that they'll try to justify intercession and making dua to the dead. They'll say the dead is not like the living. And... But all human beings, they possess an essence. And this is the argument of Rafa'i. As I did some research on this topic, and I found it was the most philosophical uh, quagmire that I could ever imagine. It was a mess. And it was very difficult to try to understand how he was trying to justify supplicating to the dead. He said that you're not making dua to uh, the dead or the living necessary. You're not making dua to the dead, but instead you're making dua to this like divine essence or this essence that all human beings possess in their sacredness. So this was a very strange concept, but this was their way of trying to justify supplicating to the dead. And... The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "A dua hu ibadah in Sunan Tirmidhi, letting us know that dua supplication is ibadah." So, with that being known, then how is it that we can direct that ibadah to anything or anyone besides Allah Azza wa Jal, regardless of an essence, regardless of how we philosophize, dua is ibadah. And dua and ibadah belongs only to Allah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.